G'day guys, it's Ben again, here to bring you another video, and today we're going to make a tunic. Radio, a basic, simple tea tunic. Now there are some examples of these from around the world, and we know actually quite a lot from looking at effigies uh, and paintings, some descriptions in manuscripts, but generally speaking, uh, what we do know for sure is that the basic design of these things changed fairly considerably depending on geographical location, the time in history, and cultural influences. So, um, some of these that have been found, obviously, uh, for example, in uh, finds in, say, for example, France, can be quite different to ones that might be found even fairly close by in somewhere like, say, Germany or in the northern areas like uh, modern day Denmark and Norway, uh, compared to other ones that might be found in artworks um, in what is now England. So um, I'm going to make one which is based on a, uh, a commercial tunic that I purchased uh, in, from a company in the UK. This is a fairly simple tunic. I'm going to be wearing it underneath a gambeson male and surcoat, so it is nothing that fantastic or special. Uh, it's not designed for going to banquet in, but I do want something which is going to uh, show off my status a bit and also uh, help me to stand out. So um, let's take a look. I leave around two centimeters the seams and you'll notice that this design is actually pretty simplistic uh, there is not a lot going on in terms of um, uh, there's not a lot going on in terms of the gussets and so on this really isn't uh, a garment that I want to use to show off any particular skill or anything uh, what I'm trying to do just to, it's a simple medieval style tunic But the first thing you need to do if you're going to make any kind of garment, whether it's a dress or a tunic or a pair of pants or whatever it might be, is wash the fabric. So when fabric comes raw from the uh, haberdashery store, then it's often uh, it hasn't been pre-shrunk and sometimes the dyes are not set. I have actually seen this before where people have got wet during a reenactment event and dye starts leaking out of their clothes. It looks horrendous. Okay, so let's avoid that. Um, and the first thing you need to do is wash it, let it dry on the line for a day or so, ideally, and then bring it back in. Best thing you want to do then is iron it flat so you can make good, accurate, solid markings. Okay, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our sleeves. Now I'm just using a very basic sleeve pattern. Radio. The length from this side to this side is essentially the wrist to the top of the shoulder. You need to have enough room or enough measurement around the wrist to allow your hand to come in and out easily on the garment. A lot of people simply measure their cuff and clearly that's not going to be enough. Okay, uh, so always allow a little bit more. You don't want clothing that's too baggy because it's going to restrict your ability to do what you need to do in a reenactment event, which is typically fighting. So um, you need to have enough room um, within the clothes to be able to use your arms and twist and all the dynamic movement that's associated with fighting, but you don't want it so baggy that it then gets in the way and starts catching on stuff. It's a difficult balance to strike. That's why uh, a lot of people just choose to uh, use a pattern based on uh, existing items of clothing that they may have already bought, and that's fine. Uh, as you go into reenactment, you might start to choose to try and create your own patterns based on archaeological evidence, and that's great, and that's fine. Um, 
but start somewhere simple, uh, which is always a good thing to do. We've got the sleeves all squared away, and now we're working on the, uh, the neckline, and just at the moment, I'm just doing some work on the bottom hems. Alrighty guys, all complete. I know this is a bit of a shorter video than I would have preferred to make. I'm going to make a more detailed video with an actual fitted uh, tunic like this uh, in a couple of weeks time. But for this, the purposes of this one is simply an everyday uh, tunic, which I'll be wearing for all my kind of work um, and that kind of thing uh, as, a, as a junior noble. And so uh, I, I needed a tunic much like this, um, just very simple. Uh, able to take a fair bit of, of knocks and work and that's that's fine. This has come out pretty well I'm quite pleased with the detail and the um, And how it fits it allows me lots of room So I can fight in this really easily uh, One a uh, one little detail that I'm just going to point out So this goes down to about the knees Which is pretty much exactly what I was looking for and there's a slit in the middle both front and rear which allows me uh, to wear this tuning whilst riding my horse and that is exactly what I'm looking for. So really pleased with today's efforts. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share and I will catch you in my next video.